Baki is perhaps the most unique case when it comes to art evolutions ever. Over its 30 year run, it reaches its artistic peak during the legendary fight between father and son. But one word that comes to mind when discussing the change afterwards is. de evolution. Or maybe re evolution. This isn't to say the art turned bad, not at all, but a lot of things you see here has been redacted. So what happened? In this video, we're gonna be discussing the final battle between Yujiro and Baki up to the Miyamoto Musashi arc. We're gonna discuss everything that was added, improved, and most importantly, removed. This is the artistic re evolution of Baki. Baki vs. Yujiro is without a shred of doubt the best illustrated fight I've ever seen. My man, Keisaku Itagaki, at one point, gave us not one, not two, but multiple full page spreads back to back of every single attack. This left my jaw on the floor. The dedication was insane, and so was the shading. Shading is my favorite part in all of these art evolution videos, and Baki Son of Ogre doesn't disappoint in the slightest. Here the shading is portrayed with three tones, your grey tones, deep inky blacks, and highlights. All of these in combination gives these characters a nearly glossy and shiny look, but there is a bit more to it. Instead of using hard barriers between different shades, the mangaka eases them in via soft tones. But even this is illustrated with a twist. Itagaki uses this grimy wood or cardboard like texture on top of everything, which further adds a lot of detail, grime, and blends everything together with a nice tone. On the nighttime safety scale, I'm giving this a 11 out of 10. This can relax your eyes more than whatever this guy can draw. As an honorable mention, Itagaki sometimes uses scattering on dark tones, a shading technique that uses dots instead of lines. This is an immensely time consuming and difficult skill to master, but he does master it. So what does he do with it after he's mastered? He removes everything. He like, never uses it ever. In Baki Do, nighttime safety scale goes down to a 6. You're in danger of losing your sight. A lot of the shading present here just gets deleted. Many of the characters either have no shading or become polished pieces of jewelry. The textures also get completely redacted. As of now, the textures are only limited to some clothing on some characters rather than the entire environment like the previous manga. Sometimes we would see these hyper-realistic shading elements on some panels, but this is very few and far between. I mean, look, Itagaki uses it on Miyamoto Musashi's toe once, for some reason. This change might seem kinda irrelevant at first, but remember those lances of light? Those amazing impact frames? Yeah, they're gone now. Say your sorry goodbyes. That technique utilized shading to focus your attention on that very specific spot between the characters. It worked because everything around it was completely grey and dark. It was a commanding, almost strike of a lightning. So naturally, it just darted your attention to it. Now in Baki Do, impact and motion are just like any other manga. A bunch of speed lines portrayed in a straight line, or in a arc. It kinda lost that novelty and it's a bit of a shame. Whilst editing this video, I've come to realize that I've made a pretty bad mistake here by calling this way of conveying speed and motion generic. Whilst the word isn't necessarily wrong to use in this case, since the previous way of conveying a lot of motion and speed was far more unique compared to its contemporary shonen mangas, but the way Itagaki actually uses this far more similar style to convey motion and speed is pushed to its absolute limit when it comes to complexity, detail, and intricacy. Instead of just using a bunch of lines to convey speed and motion, Itagaki uses these lines to also literally carve out the shape of these characters whilst they are in motion. Take this fucking image of Retsu flying through the <laughs> flying through the air. I think this is a good representation of how Itagaki uses a lot of lines in a way that conveys a lot of detail and motion at the same time. Something that is kinda hard to master when you're using so many different lines, especially if you want it to be this clear. Previously the speed of motion was actually conveyed not via lines, but rather absolute contrasts. This style gave Baki Son of Ogre feeling a far more simplicity despite it not actually being simple. This is the result of using less lines, so this is the main difference between the two. More lines, less lines, and the same general idea being conveyed in two drastically different ways. 
When it comes to the line work, it didn't really change much. Baki always had stunning, smooth, and gently interconnected line work. You will be hard pressed to find a single panel where there is a single line of a mistake. Despite all this, however, there is a case to be made that the line work actually became a lot more clear. Due to the abundance of shading in Baki's Son of Ogre, the line work oftentimes becomes overshadowed. It didn't have any space to breathe and oftentimes was completely assimilated into the shading. This is very prevalent in these two stunning page spreads where this gives off a painterly and glossy look. Frankly, this is a fucking amazing panel. We will break this down even more later, I promise, because we can't just overlook this brilliance. In Baki Do, a lot more emphasis is put on the line work because of the absence of shading. As a result, Gei Atagaki has more stress on his shoulders to actually not make a single mistake with the lines because he can't rely on the shading to potentially cover it up. As a result of the line work becoming more prominent, you could make the case that more lines start to appear, but I don't really see much of a difference. I know what you all want, you all want me to discuss why Miyamoto Musashi looks like a guppy. <laughs> we will get to it, but let's get backgrounds out of the way, along with this message, from me, subscribe! When it comes to the backgrounds, it suffers the exact same way as the shading. Previously in Baki, just like the foreground, the backgrounds received the same amount of shading, detail, and attention. Now in Baki though, the mangaka nearly never implements grey tones. It's almost always just a white space. A very detailed white space, yeah, but it's far less appealing than the previous grey tone enriched spectacle. Only time I can actually recall when the mangaka does use shading is when he's actually trying to add some aura to the characters. This is a very interesting topic to discuss, since Baki always had a, let's just say, exaggerated anatomy with its demon backs and traditional Japanese implementations. When it comes to the muscular exaggeration, shading played a large part in that. Shading is used not only as a device to convey more detail, but also to convey volume and scale. This is the kind of reason why muscles felt so massive, shading played a large role in shaping out the muscles and their details. But due to the lack of it in Baki Do, muscles feel a lot more more toned down. While the line work still does more than enough with muscle exaggeration, making these characters look like they actually have 0% fat, the lack of shading removes a whole different layer to the exaggeration. As for the faces, well, I don't know man, on one hand you got the demon ass Yujiro and the guppy looking ass Musashi. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I think these two are the best representations of how Itagaki implements more and more traditional Japanese elements within these character designs. It's very apparent with these gaping white grins and the sharp, almost liquidy eyes. They do look very expressive and dynamic, but also they are very exaggerated. It kinda makes sense for Musashi since he is a legendary figure within Japanese media and culture. I think this change puts into perspective just how important shading really is. A lot of people kinda overlook this in favor of line work and character designs, but shading is really just as much important and I hope people will come to appreciate it more. With all that being said, I'm not surprised why mangakas don't really use it that much, because it takes a lot of time. If you're using grey tones, just the regular grey tones, you have to apply that film on top of your character, which means you have to cut it out in the exact same shape you want. If anyone has worked on Photoshop, you know how annoying cutting things out is. 